Hello and welcome back to another video today here again on Forza Horizon 5 to take a look at the first of the real cars from the latest Hot Wheels 2.0 expansion here on the game, which is of course this Brabham BT62. So being a real car, I've brought it back to my main Horizon 5 test route that I was testing the car pass cars and things out of rather than staying with the Hot Wheels expansion, which is where I'll be testing out all of the Hot Wheels made up cars. So, the Brabham itself is another of these pointless track only ridiculously expensive hypercars and they're only going to make 70 of them, so even if you wanted one, you can't have one even though they're ridiculously expensive and you can afford one anyway. However, in Forza that doesn't really matter, it's more about how it drives. They do, in fact, offer a road legal conversion known as the BT62R in reality, which is carried out here in the UK the car itself, of course, being assembled in Australia. Brabham is, of course, more well known for its F1 team back in the day, founded by Jack Brabham in 1960, who was the only driver in F1 history to win a world title as a driver and team owner simultaneously the same year. The team is also well known for the Gordon Murray designed fan car, which was quite a controversial thing back in the day. The Brabham name, though, has been brought back for this car by Jack's youngest son, David Brabham, which is why well, this is the Brabham, but to celebrate 70 years of the Brabham F1 team, basically. And it is a pretty amazing thing. It produces 700 horsepower and 667 newton meters from a 5.4 litre Ford V8, which is apparently the same one from the old GT, and weighs 1,066 kilos from standard here in Forza is S2 class 974 and well the idea behind this car is that it's a GT3 car without any limits and regulation and it does feel like that it has so much downforce and so much grip um, that it actually caught me out how directly it turned in I did manage to spin it out on the roundabout because I was trying to make it slide and it just has grip 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 and then lets go completely there's no controlling it really um, but yeah, it is pretty amazing. The only problem is Forza with racing cars makes them turn in so sharply and differently to other cars that it's quite unpredictable until you get used to it. Sure, if I drove it more, I would get used to how it handled. Here down the motorway, it got up to a top speed of 205 miles per hour, which is a lot for a track car with so much downforce. As for how this thing looks, I wouldn't say it's beautiful, but it is just a bit wild, really. Um, good to see a racing car looking quite as mad as this does, although it's not really a racing car. But that's kind of the look they're going for, and I do particularly like the green with the gold stripe, although I think the number on the side is, well, one number out of what it should be. As for the interior, it is again, well, very much a racing car, because I guess that's the idea, is to give you the racing car experience if you're a very rich individual who can afford such things but doesn't actually race. But it is very cool in here. The carbon fibre wheel with all of your buttons. There are far too many buttons. But it is a pretty amazing place. It's even got gold stitching. So, as with most new vehicles, I took the Brabham for five laps of the festival to see what the best time it could set was. Now, it is only the fourth highest PI vehicle I've taken round here with the FXXK Evo, Neo EP9 and Lotus Avaya being higher rated from standard at least. So those are the times I'm looking at with the Avaya setting a 54.988 and the FXXK right at the top with a 52.6. So those were the kind of times I was looking at. Now this car was a little bit odd to me. In some corners it felt like it understeered wide and hit things, and particularly around the, the banked hairpin there. It, did seem to struggle to turn in. I often found I was running wide into the wall. Maybe I was kind of expecting too much of it because of how the downforce felt. And through this final corner I kept turning in too sharply, so I kind of had to not turn all that tight through there. Um, but I did get used to it and gradually got faster and faster, but yeah, I did start clonking some walls as I started to push a little bit more. So for its PI it did pretty well, but I kind of expected it to be slightly faster if I'm honest. So the best time I could get out of the Brabham was a 54.288, which I actually did on the final lap, making it quite a bit faster than the Lotus Avaya, actually, which is rated at 994 PI. 
so not too bad um, beating that. But given its main purpose and what it's designed for is being the ultimate trap machine, I did kind of hope it would at least beat the Avaya and the Neo, because they're quite heavy electric cars, they're super, super fast accelerating. But around the track, I was kind of hoping this would be better, although the Festival maybe isn't necessarily the best track for a super high downforce car compared to those. I didn't expect it to beat the FXXK Evo, because that's completely mad, and 998 PI. Um, but yeah, I did kind of hope it would beat those electric cars. So... Given it's a track-only car in reality that's designed for super high-performance track driving, it's a slightly disappointing lap time. But given its PI is 20 lower than the Lotus and it beats it by more than half a second, for its PI it did pretty well. So to take a quick look at the upgrade options, there are four engine swaps, an 8.4 litre V10, a 6.5 litre V12, a racing V12 and a racing 7.2 litre V8. There's also your usual all-wheel drive swap. Um, there are tyre options, although it's already on slicks, so all you can do is make them worse, which I don't know why you'd want to do it. You can, of course, do track width, uh, tyre width and track width, which I may as well do. It makes it look slightly better with the wheels slightly more out. You've got usual gearbox type things, and, well, not a lot of options, really. So there's not really much point upgrading this thing. I mean, you could make it completely mad if you wanted to, but even just fully upgrading it with the standard engine gets you into X-Class. It does also have some pretty good advanced painting options. So Group 1 is the main body, and Group 2 is the sort of accenty bits. Which we can do in the dual tone spectra flame if we really want to. So I've built it more usefully to the top of S2 in the end, 998 PI, with 810 horsepower and 1,054 kilos as its weight. I've basically maxed out everything you can without swapping the engine or the drivetrain, except for the front tyre widths, which aren't quite maxed, basically. So, with the S2 class upgrades, I returned to the festival for another five laps to see what the modified Brabham could do. Now, I have only taken two other S2 class builds round, the 488 Challenge and the 765 LT I built to S2998, and they both did 53s, a 53.2 and a 53.5, and I have taken one X-Class car round, the FXXK Evo, that did a 51.8. So really we're aiming for a low 53 or even a 52 with this modified Brabham. Hopefully it can beat the 488 Challenge and the 765 LT. I feel like I've built it slightly better than I did with either of those, and those were a while ago. But the way this thing drives, it it is just ridiculous. I did drive it a little bit with the X-Class tune before. It's just completely mad, but it sets a reasonable time. So the best time I could get out of the Brabham was a 52.029, which is more than the second faster than any other S2-class car I've built before, although it is, of course, slower than the X-class Ferrari FXXK Evo. Now, I did know going into this that it would be ridiculously fast modified, but I'm slightly surprised still that it did so well, even with my tune and my driving. But then all the other cars on the leaderboard were, of course, driven by me, and no doubt it could go a lot faster than that with a really good tune and a faster driver um, but yeah the Brabham is pretty amazing to drive stock although it's kind of in the middle of a category so not all that useful for anything but upgraded to S2 I think it's going to be very 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 fast and potentially a bit overpowered in open racing but there we go that is going to do it for a first look at the Brabham do let me know which of the cars from the Hot Wheels expansion you'd like me to take a look at because there's plenty more that I'd like to take a look at if you're enjoying these videos. But for now, for a look at the Brabham, that is going to be all. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with the next video very soon.